You know, I always wanted a convertible. Be sure to stay tuned because we're cutting the roof off my 328i. Welcome back to another video on my soaked F3328i. If you missed last week's video, let me catch you up. So basically what happened is I walked out to my car and found that there were over two inches of water in the back seat. I had a clogged sunroof drain, which normally gets all the water out of here and drains it down the door, which led to water pouring in my car for four straight days. Everything in the car is still completely soaked. The seats are wet, the floor, I'm kind of nervous. That's, oh, that's so disgusting. Now, before mold and mildew have a chance to set in, I'm going to pull out the seats, the front ones over here, completely remove the rear seats, which seems unnecessary until you see what we're up to. And then the most daunting task, I need to take up the entire carpet and honestly just throw it out and get a new one. carpet's two pieces. There's the front piece here and then the back. Look at this. It's still puddling. Ew. You can see that the carpet goes over and there's just a whole bunch of stuff in the way. Um, which makes it a royal pain in the butt to remove and install this. So even after just touching the carpet, my hand is like, it's like sticky and oily. So oh, this carpet probably need to get changed anyway. <laughs> so, so now that the carpet's out, I was looking and I was like, wait a minute, the little vent's not even here. Whoever had this car before me, it should look like that. Like, where is it? <laughs> so I'll have to get one of those when I put this car back together. All right, so for the old carpet, we're going for ease. And then when we go to put the new carpet in, we're gonna do it right. So I'm just gonna make a couple cuts and we'll be able to pull this old nasty carpet out of here. This carpet's surprisingly easy to rip. I'm not really sure why. I wonder if it's like dry rotted, if that's even possible with this. So as you can see, quite a bit of water. What is this? Auto eyeliner. Oh, it must be for your car. I gotta go to the shop back to get all this out. And I wanna make sure that I Clorox this just to make sure that if there was any growth of any kind that any germ is absolutely killed. I wanna do it right. I wanna get all of this out of here. So how do you make your sunroof stop leaking? Well, you completely take it out, which is what we are doing. Now, if you like sunroofs and you're not super happy about what we just did to my car, don't worry, because we have a sunroof for you and it is attached to my F3335, my personal car that we're raffling away. For more information on the giveaway of the car that has over $50,000 in mods, be sure to see the links down in the description. The raffle goes from November 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. Hurry up, enter, and good luck. So as you can kind of see, the floor is still pretty wet. I got as much of it as I could with towels and with the shop vac, but there's still a little moisture in here. So I'm gonna let the car actually dry out for a couple days. This video is not over yet, but for me, it's going to be. My friend Bill, you may know him as Super Officer, or Boost Officer, he has a TTRS now. He gave us this fan because fun fact of useless knowledge, this building that I'm in right now is not, was not heated or cooled for the last two years. So in the summer, it'd be like 110 in here. So he bought us a fan because he didn't want to die when he worked with us. So thanks, Bill. It's uh, gonna dry out my 328. I mean, this fan is not overkill <laughs> at all. Who needs air conditioning when you got this bad boy? Ha <laughs> ha. All right, today's Monday. Let's resume on Wednesday. All right, so at this point in the process, we have the interior pretty well stripped out of this car. As you can see here, there is not much else in here. The next thing we need to do is remove the front and wait, the rear glass. Wait, wait, what? What? Why? We're gonna be cutting the roof 
off my F30 328i. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now, truthfully, Zach and I have no idea what we're doing. Um, and that's what's gonna make this video so amazing because we're gonna be figuring it out as we go and hopefully we don't screw it up too bad. Now, we do know that to properly remove the roof, what you need to do is remove the rear glass and the front glass, which is something we've already done. And we've also dropped the sunroof, which is why it's over there on the floor. All right, so as I said, we haven't really done this before, but my understanding is we have to drill out these little spot welds. There is some of this glue stuff in here that we're gonna have to figure out how to chisel away. And then after we disconnect some things on the shark fin, we should have the roof free. Now I have a feeling like if I don't do it now, I'm gonna forget and I'm gonna rip some cords out. If you're ever working on electronics, Here's a little pro tip. Always take pictures so you remember what goes where. Let me get this disconnected, and then we'll start drilling out some of those spot welds. Oh look, here's the rear drains. Not clogged. <laughs> so we're gonna start drilling. I'm definitely gonna be super careful. This is an airbag. So I definitely don't want to uh, hit that. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> the roof just like shoots off. Actually, it might be a good idea. Now, it's my understanding that we have the roof skin, which isn't structural, it's just a piece of sheet metal. It's spot welded and then it's glued down. So they do make these special bits that I got. I got a couple sets of them. Some people say they work great. Some people say they're awful. And what it's supposed to do is help you just drill through the top layer. I'm not really super sure how it's gonna do that. We're gonna see if this doesn't work, we're just gonna go to regular drill bits and my grinder, we're gonna grind this thing off. And then we have some power tools that we bought just for this job, which we are super excited to use. <laughs> Ow, it's really loud. <laughs> what? Who? Now, if you followed our channel for any length of time, even if today's your first video, you're gonna learn really quick that we're not body shop guys. <laughs> we are performance guys. So you can see I have these, I assume I have to drill all of these out. So I have this little punch and what this does, I'll do it on this one, is put a little indentation which is going to be where my drill bit sits. So let's try out one of these super special drill bits and hopefully I don't ruin it in two seconds. It's working decent I guess. I just should have bought like 400 more of <laughs> them. Oh, I heard a pop. I, that was sweet. If that was it, that actually worked. Let me get the shot back. So that actually works surprisingly well. As you can see, it kind of just went through the first layer and then you kind of feel it click a little bit and then you're good to go. So at this time, I'm going to drill out the other 4,000 spot welds. We'll take it from there. All right, so we have finished drilling out, I think, all of these. They didn't all go as smooth as my uh, my demo. You see, I got a little wild on this one over here, and uh, well, that one kind of went through. Uh, <laughs> we also noticed, if you come up across the front here, that there are a ton across the front. And in the back, I can't really tell, so I got a scraper, I'm gonna scrape away and see if we can see any. spot welded here, gap spot welded here. So you can look underneath and see where the welds are. So we are going to have to remove these spot welds on the back, just like there are in the front. Unfortunately, I'm running really low on bits. I blasted through four. Now the first one got us to like here, and then there was three that got us to here. So we do have one more kit. So I'm really hoping that that kit is a champ because I still need to seriously do about 45 more spot welds. So you know that they're gonna wear down quick because they're all double-sided. But basically, this thing has like a little centerpiece, and then this thread's on here. This little point is supposed to go in, it has a spring inside of it. So as long as you have some kind of little pilot, like this over here, you push it down, and then it cuts the hole. If this is easier, I'm gonna kick myself for the other side, because we definitely did that the hard way. Oh, heck yeah! Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to go all the way through. Well, if your goal is to go all the way through, it works really well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one down, 300 to go. It's been very difficult for me to judge <laughs> where the first layer of metal goes. 
So basically, I'm just drilling them out. I'm just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> just gonna shoot it straight here. Um, this thing goes and then it stops at this. I don't know how you're supposed to know when you go through the first layer because as you're cutting, they're like melting together and they're, they're literally welded. So it's gonna have a few more holes than it did from the factory, but the weight reduction is just gonna make this thing <laughs> faster and better on gas. And it's not structural, so don't worry. Right, so Zach and I, we think, has successfully drilled out all of the holes, which has taken us hours. I thought it was gonna be like 20 minutes, we'll be done. No, in 20 minutes, we were like eighth of the way done. So what started to happen though, is as we started to get in here, these are starting to pop up and starting to disconnect. So now the goal, and I do have uh, some power tools to kind of help us. Basically the goal is to separate this while not like wildly taking, bending it out of shape. So basically that's gonna be the goal. Now over here, like if you look, like this stuff right here that I just scraped off, there's just like tar stuff. So like if you look here, all the body shop guys are like, no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well. This is kind of nerve wracking, being honest. Oh yeah. Oh heck yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't have even drilled them out. We just use this thing. Bam. All right, I want to say that this thing is like screwed down into the car. So I'm going to try to get as much of this junk off as I can. Let's see if I'm right about it. Oh, that was satisfying. Now I really don't want to damage the part that I just had painted. So before I go any further, I'm going to tape this up. All right, so now, whoa! That was the sound of progress. Whoo! Progress. That was satisfying. Uh, we have to get under this piece here. So I'm going to try not to try to get this thing under here. Ah! Are you okay? How bad? <laughs> <laughs> So much louder now. <laughs> I wonder what Kate would say if she walked out right now. Like, oh, hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> All right, we did it. Hold on, hold on. Look, it's a convertible. <laughs> we did it. It's, it's like it's like that. <laughs> Here, hold on. Can't wait to feel my hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so as you can see, we were successful. We mimicked the van over there, except this one has a side lift instead of a front lift. <laughs> All right, Zach, we're closer than we've ever been. Got it? Yep. <laughs> Dude. Yes. Behold, the F3328 convertible. <laughs> Wouldn't that make it a... Uh... Oh, it's an F33 now. Yeah, F33. And that's how you make an F37, the four-door convertible. So as you can see, Zach and I successfully got the roof off without damaging anything. Um, some of the metal is a little bit bent up, but I just need to go flatten that back down and I need to scrape off any of this excess ceiling and junk here. And if there's any bare parts of metal, I am gonna have to go through and prime them. I want this as flat and perfect all the way around as possible in preparation for our 